today, we're excited to announce Langflow 1.7. Langflow 1.7 has a ton of new features that we're really excited about, which we'll get into at the end of this video. But for now, we're going to focus on the top three features coming to Langflow 1.7. Langflow 1.7 now seamlessly connects to any MCP server exposed over streamable HTTP or standard input output. This makes Langflow as an MCP client 100% spec compliant to the model context protocol specification. Soon, Langflow will also be exposed as an MCP server over streamable HTTP so you can use it in your MCP oriented workflows. Feature number two that we're really excited about is Langflow now makes the LLM as a judge architectural pattern seamlessly accessible to developers. It does so with some new sets of LLM operations components. Let's take a look at this now. So if we come over, this is Langflow 1.7, and we'll make a new flow. We'll start with a totally blank flow, and we'll do our usual suspects, chat input, chat output. Okay. What we need in the middle is something of a judge that implements the LLM as a judge architecture. In Langflow 1.7, there's a new component that does this. Let's dive into it. So if we now expand LLM operations, we can see the LLM selector. The LLM selector is exactly what it sounds like. It allows you to choose one judge LLM, and this judge LLM can choose the right language model from a collection of language models. So think about it this way. You have a, a, a big brain that, based on the user's prompt, chooses the right model for the job because different models are good at different things. Let's put it into practice and see. So for our big brain, our judge LLM, we'll choose a model from Anthropic. So we'll go to Anthropic and we'll choose the Anthropic bundle right here. Um, and we'll choose Claude, maybe Opus is, actually Opus is quite large. Let's do Opus. And we have our Anthropic API key filled in. Now we're going to expose the language model and we'll put the language model into the judge LLM. We'll also connect the chat input and output while we're here. The only thing left to do is choose from a variety of other language models that are maybe specialized at different types of tasks. Let's do that now. So if we come over back and if we choose language model, uh, it's, it's just a general language model component. And let's sure, let's use GPT-40 mini uh, for one type of task and we'll choose language model right here. We'll plug that in. But maybe we want to run open source local models via something like Olama. We can also do that. So we can give um, the judge an open source local option. So we'll do that. So we'll add um, Olama right here. And we, we get Olama. And Olama listens on localhost. This is correct. So let's refresh the list right here. Um, and now we can choose Granite 4 from IBM. It's one of our in-house models. And then we'll expose the language model and connect it over here. Finally, what if we wanted to use something like Open Router that gives us a selection of a number of models hosted across a variety of providers, choosing one according to our criteria? Well, we can do that because Langflow has a first class integration with Open Router. So we'll choose Open Router. Maybe we'll put this one slightly below and we'll choose our Open Router API key. And for the model, we can choose any number of models that are hosted on Open Router. I feel like DeepSeq is a great one. So we'll choose DeepSeq R1. We'll expose the language model. And now we give our judge three different options to choose from. We give it DeepSeq from OpenRouter. We give it Watson um, Granite 4 from our Watson X class of models using the Olama API. And finally, we give it um, GPT-4 Mini from OpenAI. Let's see what it's going to choose. So now that we have this, we can head over to our playground here in Langflow and ask it a question. Hi, what's the square root of pi? Uh, and of course, I don't know that we chose a model that's specialized in math, um, but the point is we could. And so now the judge LLM chose one and it said the square root of pi is approximately 1772. More precisely, it's about this. But which language model did the judge choose? Well, we can inspect that with logs. And so let's go back here and go to our LLM selector component and we'll click on um, the output here. And so we can inspect the output. And indeed, this is the output. But if we go to logs, we can look at all the details. So the judge LLM chose GPT-40 mini, which is model index one. And it chose from model zero, DeepSeek, model one, 40 mini, or model two, Granite 4, latest. It chose 40 mini for a reason that um, only the judge knows. But this is really interesting because this architecture used to be quite difficult. And now it's available to everyone in Langflow 1.7. Another feature that we're interested in Langflow 1.7 and that we're really excited about, frankly, is that we make control flow logic a lot more intelligent. 
What does that mean? Well, previously in Langflow, we had an if else component where you could say, if this condition is true, then go down this path, else go down another path. We found this to be somewhat simple um, and, and usually logic is a little bit more complex. So now what you can do with Langflow is have logic branching for your workflows, but have an LLM decide which branch to go down. It's slightly more complex than if else, and it allows you to build really complex workflows that work exceptionally well. Let's take a look at that now. So if we come back to our flow, we'll delete our LLM selector and maybe our language model components as well. And, and we'll go back to chat input and chat output. Next, we go to LLM operations and we choose smart router. And smart router is like if else, but well, smarter. And so what we can see is it needs a language model. So let's go back and get our anthropic model we we genuinely love Anthropic and we believe they make some of the best models in the industry. And what we'll do is um, we have our API key selected. We're going to expose once again the language model and we'll connect the model. We'll also connect the chat input. But notice here um, that the outputs are positive or negative. And that's because there's a series of routes that this component can send us down in terms of workflow path. And, and that's specified here. In routes, we can see positive with a description and negative with a description. This is how the LLM knows where to send the workflow. So if the LLM receives positive feedback, satisfaction or compliments, then it will go down the positive path. If it witnesses complaints, issues or dissatisfaction, it will go down the negative path. We can add a path here and we'll just call it neutral just to understand how this works. And we'll say, use this when um, the feedback is ambiguous, right? which is the opposite of obvious. And so we'll save this. And so now we have three paths. And so we can have similar to three paths, we can have three uh, chat outputs. So chat output one, chat output two, and chat output three. And so in case of positive, go down this path. In case of negative, go down this path. And in case of neutral, go down this path. And so now we can see how the LLM decides which path to go down based on a user's prompt. Let's take a look at that. So um, I'll expand chat input here. And let's give it, um, let's say this is great, which is clearly positive feedback. Um, and we'll play the smart router. And the smart router is going to do its routing job based on Claude Opus 4.5. And it will choose a path to go down there. So it chose um, it, the, the negative path, as we can see, was blocked. The neutral path was blocked, but it went down the positive path. Let's have some fun with this. Let's say this is really poor right? And we'll send it down again. And in a couple of seconds, our LLM will decide, okay, which workflow path do I go down? And as we can see, it did not go down positive, it did not go down neutral, but it went down negative. Just for completion, let's say, um, we can, you know, I don't know anything, right? Let's just go down neutral. Um, but this is interesting, because the LLM may decide this is negative. Uh, I don't know, it has negative language. And so, um, there you go. But the LLM was intelligent and it went down neutral and negative was blocked and positive was blocked. Thus, uh, we have a lot more intelligent logic branching coming to Langflow 1.7. Of course, there is one more thing. Langflow has always been the best way to ship AI agents with minimal code and maximum clarity. In Langflow 1.7, we're introducing a drop-in replacement to our stock agent component that can be used in a variety more configurations that is also enterprise ready and hardened. Let's build an agent and then explore where we're taking it. So we will keep the chat input and the chat output and we can get rid of the other things. Let's go get an agent. Um, and this is the agent component that we know and love since many, many versions of Langflow. We'll keep one chat output available and we'll pass in the chat input, okay? Uh, this looks great. So now we have an open AI. Let's switch to Anthropic and use uh, Claude. Maybe let's use Sonnet 4.5. So this is a basic agent and an agent can use tools and so on. So we can even test this, right? We can say hello uh, to the agent in the playground and the agent, in this case, Claude, will respond to us. Um, this is great and you can get very far with this. With what we're about to introduce, you can get even further. I'm talking about Kuga. Kuga is IBM's configurable generalist agent. Let's take a look at Kuga and then understand its value. So uh, you can go to Kuga.dev. Kuga is an early preview. It's a configurable generalist agent and it can do a number of things. It comes with hybrid task execution and human in the loop workflows and performs exceptionally well on leading benchmarks. 
Even more, it's grounded in research and comes with a great integration a set of components for the Agent Lifecycle Toolkit. And so you can think of Kuga as Agent++. It's a compound agent that handles a number of different execution flows and does so while being able to be grounded in your real-time enterprise data. The best part about this is it's a complete drop-in replacement. So if you're already using Agent in Langflow, the experience is seamless. Let's actually look at that right now. So let's go to uh, Langflow over here. And instead of our Agent, we'll just replace it with Kuga, which is available in the sidebar, which is, again, the configurable generalist agent. We pass through the input. We pass through the response. With Kuga, you can give it instructions, which is you know more details about how you want it to work. We'll go back and choose... Um, actually, we'll stick with OpenAI this time. And this looks great. And so let's do it again. We'll just say hello. And you notice the drop-in replacement has been dropped in, except Kuga accesses some of its um, sort of lower level agents to understand what it is that you want. And so um, we're really excited about Kuga. It is an early technology preview. And at this point in time supports a limited set of models, although this is expanding. So we would actually invite your feedback and we can't wait to see what you're gonna build with Kuga. Now, we've covered a lot of features. Let's wrap up by looking at the change log for Langflow 1.7. To do that, we're gonna open up the documentation and we can see we've already talked about streamable HTTP, but Langflow 1.7 also comes with first class support for webhook authentication. You can also configure API key validation and we have now server side request forgery protection. Um, we can now write files to Amazon's S3 service and Google Drive straight from Langflow. This means if you have a flow that generates some output and you want to save that output, you can now save it to cloud sources. This is also quite valuable. Finally, you can do a ton of operations on data frames and data, um, as well as our support for Kuga and more. Lastly, the web search component now consolidates web search, news search, and RSS feeds into the search criteria. And this allows you to search across a broader variety of media to have better retrieval flows and get more grounded information. With that, we're really excited to see what you build and we can't wait to give it to you. Um, if you are already on Langflow, we encourage you to upgrade and share your feedback with us on socials or on Discord. There are links to that around this video. Thank you so much for watching and we'll catch you in the next one.